fiction is not harmless. Fiction can be a very dangerous weapon indeed. Fiction causes problems. It has caused problems. Rushdie's work has caused problems and is going to cause more trouble. We will tolerate anything. If somebody swear at ourselves, we will tolerate. If somebody swear at our parents, we will tolerate. But if somebody swear at our prophet and our, our big persons, we won't tolerate. Battles over the dangers of fiction are not usually fought on Britain's streets. But Salman Rushdie's novel, The Satanic Verses, has outraged many Orthodox Muslims by its treatment of the life of a fictionalized prophet as an ordinary man, subject to temptation and open to both good and evil influences. What I was trying to say, there are two sections which say when a new idea comes into the world, a great idea like Islam, it has to answer two questions. One is, what do you do when you're weak? And the other is, what do you do when you're strong? And that's to say, when you're weak, do you compromise in order to survive? Or are you bloody-minded and determined? In which case, most likely you'll be destroyed, but if you're not destroyed, you become something huge. You know? And the second question is, when you become something huge and when your enemies are at your mercy, all that, you know, is do you forgive them? Are you tolerant? Orthodox Muslims in Bradford, it seems, could not tolerate the existence of the satanic verses. Their campaign hit the headlines when they burned a copy to express their anger. Those campaigning to ban Rushdie's novel have joined an international Islamic battle against modernism, whose first call came from Al-Azhar University in Cairo. It was distributed through the Muslim clergy in Britain via the mosque in London's Regent's Park. After the book was banned in India and many Islamic countries, the faithful were told that the satanic verses insulted the Quran. This book, the holy book, Quran, which we Muslim believe was revealed by... Allah, by God, to the Holy Prophet, Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the book which is exactly the same as it was 1400 years ago. There has been no changes. And all the historians, whether they were Muslims or non-Muslims, for 1400 years they have written thousands of books and never ever questions the authenticity of this book. There has been never any doubts on this book that it has had any changes or this was ever, ever in dispute. Now, if you read this novel without any proof, without evidence, uh, any evidences, this uh, perception is totally shattered. Allah Akbar Allah Akbar it's not views, it's facts. He's dealing with facts, but it's his views, but it's our facts. He should not deal our facts according to his views. If it's a fact that the earth is round, he can't give his view what it is. Okay, he might, but it's useless. If something is true, it's true. There's no point giving views on it. Well, uh, I think it's a stupid thing to write about because no. You are supposed to write about religions in Muslim, in the Muslim world. Uh, I've not completely read it. I don't want to read it either because so I've, what do you call it? Um, some people have read it and I've seen verses from it which he has used bad words. So it's not for reading it. I think what many people would find unacceptable is the license that a writer in the 20th century uh, gives himself to use early Islamic material as literary material rather than as sacred material, and this is what happens in this book. The material was used in the context of many fantasies. Uh, things are really intercalated one into the other. You find uh, that we have, we have the author's fantasies, we have the fantasies of many of the protagonists, uh, and we have the imagination of the prophet himself, all entangled within one another. And it is this, because it does not confine 
Muhammad to the role which he has in tradition, that is because he is being used as literary material, is considered to be quite offensive. He has uh, portrayed our prophet uh, like an animal, and we object to that strongly, because we must remember that when God sends messengers, the God puts in messengers special qualities, and there are these qualities which hinder any satanic influences. So, Prophet Muhammad, he was a pure prophet, and there was no satanic influence. In a dream sequence, Rushdie describes his fictional prophet receiving verses from the archangel Gabriel, which tell him to recognize three traditional goddesses. He later withdraws these verses from the holy text, returning to a pure monotheism, and claims they were inspired by Satan to tempt him. In the title of the book itself, the, the satanic verses, uh, which are supposed to have... Uh, been inspired by the devil and then abrogated uh, by uh, divine guidance. Now, uh, this the question of the uh, satanic verses is is well attested in a very reliable uh, early Arabic source, uh, Al Tabari, uh, and uh, in historical terms, it is very plausible because uh, Muhammad was a consummate dip diplomat. Um, and diplomacy was waged at every conceivable level, at the level of tribal relations, at the level of economic relations, and at the level of relations amongst gods as well. The whole argument of the book relies on an equation that human beings have um, the good side and the bad side. They have the devil in them and the angel. They are not pure black or white, and they are, human beings are gray, and, and even degrees of gray. And that's why the, the prophet is, is portrayed as, as an angel, as, a, as a, the ally of God, the beloved of God. But at the same time, Rashi was saying that every man has the devil inside him, or a certain proportion of the devil inside him, if you like. And by, by working hard, you combat the evil side. A question. What is the opposite of faith? Not disbelief. Too final, certain, closed itself a kind of belief. Doubt. The human condition. But what of the angelic? Halfway between God and Homo Sap, did they ever doubt? They did. Challenging God's will one day, they hid muttering beneath the throne, daring to ask forbidden things. And he questions. Is it right that? Could it not be argued? Freedom, the old antiquest. He calmed them down, naturally employing management skills. Flattered them. You will be the instruments of my will on earth, of the salvation, damnation of man, all the usual, etc. And, hey, presto, end of protest, on with the halos, back to work. Angels are easily pacified. Turn them into instruments and they'll play your harpy tune. Human beings are tougher nuts. Can doubt anything, even the evidence of their own eyes, of behind their own eyes, of what, as they sink heavy-lidded, transpires behind their closed peepers. Angels, they don't have much in the way of a will. To will is to disagree, not to submit, to dissent. Well, he is entitled to his own doubt. I'm not uh, searching for whatever is in, uh, in Salman Rushdie's uh, quote-unquote God-shaped hole that he fills with fiction. I don't, uh, I, it's not a concern of mine whatever he fills his own God-shaped hole with. Um, I am concerned with my own feelings, my own heart from his uh, utterances. As a Muslim, as a person who was raised in an Islamic country with my Islamic education, I had trouble with some chapters, especially the scene where, when the prophet tries to make love to the angel. And that was a revelation scene. Um, so I said, I can't take that. It was too much for me. I put the book aside and started thinking and rationalizing about the whole thing. And I asked myself this following question, um, will I continue, will I finish the book? And I said, yes, I will, because I like it. Um, why did I have trouble with the, with the scene? Uh, I realized that I had trouble with the scene because um, 
it was pushing me or urging me to re-examine my position towards history. Let's first get one thing clear. I mean, what we're talking about really is a novel, is a piece of fiction. Um, and as novels go, um, I think it, it deals with a subject that is pretty legitimate. Um, and, uh, and of course, Salman Rushdie has a license as a writer to deal with whatever subject that he, he chooses. Um, <clears throat> of course, there is something that also has to be said that the novel is, is, is highly irreverent about, um, about, um, figures that are revered and, 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 and held in high esteem by Muslims. This book, some people call it a freedom of speech and freedom of expression. But there is a great deal of difference between freedom of speech and freedom of abuse, freedom of insult, and freedom of provocation. This book contains everything which ridiculize and insult Islam. Therefore, we would like to see this book to be withdrawn and totally banned from the circulation. The theme that the Satanic Verses is dealing with is not new in the Islamic world. Many Arab writers before re-examined, questioned uh, the history or the Islamic history. People like Hussein Mruwi, uh, Taha Hussein, Najib Mahfouz in their books. Some of the books were banned. Some, uh, Taha Hussein uh, was forced to resign his post in, in Cairo University. The only difference is those writers were talking from behind a curtain. They were not, but Rushdie came and opened the curtain and said it openly and without any uh, restraints or restrictions. People say that I've called Muhammad, Muhammad's wife prostitutes. It's not true. I have done no such thing. What I did do in the Jahiliya section, after the return to, to the city, was to counterpoint the, the haram of Muhammad, uh, you know, of Mahound in the novel, in which it's clearly stated that the real haram was composed of wives living chastely with him, you know, and, 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 uh, and to counterpoint that with a profane world, of this decrepit poet who hides out in this brothel where people take the names of the, prostit of the prophet's wives. You know? And to say, here is a sacred world, here is the profane world, you know? here is the moral Puritan world, here is the earthy, debased world. You know? And to make them images, mirror images of each other in order to contrast them. I come from a Muslim tradition in which there was plenty of questioning. You know, um, I, I don't, I don't see these things. I mean, anybody who studied Sufi mysticism knows that there's a great deal of questioning and doubt in it. You know, that the uh, the idea that 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 Islam is just this set of of you know unbending laws, you know, is one which I question. You know, and, and I question it not from some abstract position, but I question it from my own life experience. You know, from the kind of Muslims I have known. Now, no doubt the Imams who are ranged against this book will say that they were all bad Muslims, but I mean, actually they weren't. <laughs> 